So let me ask you a quick question. What does money, relationship, and sex all have in common? Well, first of all, you can say, well, you can pay for sex and for a relationship if you really have a lot of money. But that's not really what we're going to talk about. Because there's something very powerful that controls all of those aspects in your life. Whether it's intimacy in your relationship, whether it's the amount of money that you make. And that is really your storage unit. And you might ask, what is my storage unit? Well, part of my storage unit means that as you develop, you have like the storage unit of information. So it's your family, your friends, your TV, everything around you helps define how you think about money, how you think about sex or intimacy, how you think about relationships and things like that. But for the most part, we live in a society again, and I've mentioned this before, which is called the big lie that most people don't see how their past experiences actually help define a lot of those things and what it means to us. You know, there's a lot of great things out there like uh, love languages and uh, language of apology that really take a look at how we want to receive and how we give it. Because what we have to remember is that in our upbringing, we are being told and we are being seen, especially by examples of what that means to us. I'll give you a perfect example. I had a student one time and she comes up to me and says, I'm, I don't know what's wrong with my boyfriend. You know, he lives several hours away. He wants to now come move closer to me. He wants to call me almost every day. He's like, he's the female and I'm the male in the relationship. And I was looking at her and the whole class is, you know, uh, looking at her and wondering some of the guys like, man, I want a girlfriend like that. And obviously not all of them, but some of them were. Uh, so I asked her, what did your dad do for a living? And as soon as I said that, her eyes just like bow, opened up really wide. Because she realized that she was following the same patterns. She was taking the information from a storage unit and actually applying it to her own life. See, her dad traveled for his career. So she would only see him on the weekends. And on the weekends, her mom and him would have a relationship. So what does she do to define the relationship? She defined distance. She defined conversation every three days. She defined intimacy and connection only on the weekends. So when she defined it that way, that's what she wanted to create in her reality. Was it really what she wanted? Probably not. Actually, I will tell you it wasn't what she wanted because she opened herself up. Just the fact that her boyfriend was going to move closer and that it was freaking her out and that she didn't want it, it was obviously she was creating the same fears that had been embedded in her in her own upbringing. The same thing happens financially. What happens if we grow up in an environment of struggle? That everything, you have to work very hard and money's hard to get. Money doesn't grow on trees. Then what do we create in a reality? We make a little bit of money and then we can't even have a savings in a bank account because we freak out and we want to use it right away because we have to be broke. Because we've learned in our upbringing that being broke is part of reality. So we don't even know how to save. So we don't even know how to create more than what we actually need. So when I mean that storage unit, it's very important for you to look at that. And when I talked about sex, intimacy, same thing. You know, working with couples counseling, and I was sitting with a couple, and uh, he was telling me about how she always wanted to fight and she always wanted to argue. And it's all these situations. There was so much drama. He was just tired of it. And she was telling me how he would create drama in the relationship. And when he wouldn't respond is that she feels like she doesn't love her. Why? Because in her relationships growing up, she saw her mom, her dad, and other adults create connection through drama. So what would happen once they got into battle, once they argued? Later on, they would kiss and make up. All of a sudden, they, but that would create that intensity. That would create that intimacy that they longed for, but they didn't know how to create it without creating that drama first. So for her, a type of connection with her partner was meaning that she created drama and all of a sudden he was engaged because he was so emotional about being part of that relationship. But what happened if he disengaged? He didn't grow up in an environment where there's drama and stress and relationship. So for him, it was something foreign. So what would happen is that he would disengage thinking it would help the situation, not knowing that she defined love as a battle, not knowing that she defined intimacy as a makeup process after that battle. So what I want to point out to you 
is I want you to reflect what is in that storage unit that you have. What was created when it comes to money? What was created when it comes to sex or intimacy? What was created when it comes to relationship? Hell, what was created when it comes to happiness? When it comes to your belief systems about yourself, what has been created in that storage unit? See, most people fail though when they look at that storage unit because they look at it, it might create some pain, it might create some reflection, might create some confusion, but they don't understand what to do with it. So what do they do? They try to get rid of that box. They try to get rid of that anxiety that's creating in them. And what happens, they get rid of it, it comes right back because it's part of their core. It's part of their belief system. But they don't understand that the only way you can get rid of that box is to replace it with something else. You have to replace it with something that you want to create. So let's say if it's a business perspective, financial perspective, then what do you need to do? How can you replace it to see a different reality? Maybe going to places where people have more money, where people have a different reality, maybe creating an inner circle within you, joining a mastermind group, going to networking meetings, going to places where people eat, whatever it is that can see in your mind that can help you create that reality within yourself, within your storage unit, that that can exist. What about relationships? How can you surround yourself then with relationships of people that have functional relationships? That people that have a connection with the other person not build on drama. Same thing with everything else in your life. Because the first thing that your mind needs is exposure. It needs to see that there is a different reality. What happens if you turn on the TV and you start seeing that people have chaotic relationships? Then it just adds it to it. Yeah, this is what reality is like. What, that's what media wants you to believe because the bigger the separation, the more they can sell to you. So reality is that you need to look at yourself and see how can I expose myself to those things. And once you start exposing yourself to those things, then it makes your mind unconsciously question that reality of that storage unit. And once you start questioning, the snowball effects happen. That's when you slowly start seeing changes and you might not see it, but then like a couple months later, three months later, six months later, you realize that you are a completely different person. Why? Because your mind had the seeds and you gave it the foundation to be able to grow. So expose yourself to those things. Look for a different reality. Question your storage unit. Why do you have that belief system? Is it really what you want? Is it really the reality that you want to create? And if it's not, let it go. And one thing will happen when you try to let it go. And I've seen this time and time again when I'm working with people is that they come back and then they have problems fitting in to their old reality. They have problems fitting into their old friendships sometimes, even the relationships that they have with their family, because they're so used to having that connection build on all the negative things that's happened in their life. Ask yourself, when you connect to people, how do you connect to them? Are you connecting on a basis of what's negative or what's positive? Are you connecting on what the lack of opportunity or are you connecting on a possibility of life? So what happens to some of those people then is that they start questioning even their own reality. But it's a positive thing. So some of those people will try to pull you back in because if they don't, then they have to look at themselves and they themselves have to change. So ask yourself that. How can you be that then that example that helps them Make those changes. So I just ask if you're going to do anything in your life is to just take that time to reflect. Don't let yourself be drawn in by that wave. Actually sit back on the beach for a little bit. Take that time of silence and reflect. And actually something that I want to leave you with. Einstein, for example, used to say that all his ideas did not come from thinking. They came from that silence. So when you're able to sit down and reflect on your storage unit. Give yourself that time to really process it. Give yourself that time to really sit down and make it concrete of what you want in your reality. And if you actually sit down and put it in writing, your mind already starts thinking, okay, this is something that they want. This is something that I need to start looking for. So once you write it down, put it somewhere that you can see it, somewhere that helps you challenge it. Make a commitment every week to do something to help you challenge that belief system. And if you don't have any mentors around you, get audio books. Watch movies that are empowering. Watch videos of people that are having functional relationships or that are successful in business or that is happy in their life. 
Look at that because that's what your mind will look for and that's what your mind will find. Well, thank you and I wish you much success. Till next time.